Hello, and welcome to this lesson on event handling in Svelte. In this video, we learn how to handle native DOM events with a special Svelte directive. These days, web applications have all sorts of interactive features, like drop down menus, contact forms, or even movable elements. When a user interacts with one of these features, it fires off an event in the browser. The application then needs to react to those events and execute some code. To interact with these DOM events, Svelte gives us a directive called on. To use it, we write the on keyword, followed by a colon, and then any standard DOM event. As the directive's value, we can either use an inline expression or a function. When we use an inline expression or a function with parameters, it needs to be written inside an arrow function. The on directive works for any standard DOM event, like keyboard or input events. As a demonstration, we'll change the value of a variable on the click of a button. We'll start in the script section and define a variable called name with John as its value. This is the variable that we're going to change later with the click. In the markup, we'll add an h2 and bind the name in mustache syntax. Below that, we'll create a button that says, change name. Then, on click of that button, we set name to Jane. If we go over to the browser and click on the button, the name changes to Jane. So, the expression executed when the click event fired. Now, let's take a look at how we can use functions for our event handling logic, instead of inline expressions. All we need to do, is replace the inline expression with a reference to a standard function. So in the script section, function, change name. Then, name equals, Jane. Then we can just replace the arrow function with a reference to change name. If we go to the browser and click the button, the name changes just like it did with the inline expression. But what if the function has parameters? We mentioned earlier that when a function has one or more parameters, we have to invoke it in an arrow function. That's because Svelte automatically passes an event object to the function. We'll discuss the event object in a bit. For now, let's change our example to allow the function to take a name as an argument. We'll start by adding new name as a parameter and assign it to name. Then, in the click event, we'll add an arrow function. Invoke change name. And set Jane as the argument. If we head over to the browser and click the button, the name changes to Jane. One advantage of using the arrow function is that it also allows us to invoke multiple handler functions on a single event. To demonstrate, let's add a surname variable and a function that changes its value. So, let surname equal to do. Then, function, change surname, new surname and we'll set surname to new surname. In the markup, we'll bind surname to the paragraph. And in the button, we'll add the second function with a new surname as argument. If we go to the browser and click the button, the name and the surname changes, so the second function works too. Now it's time to discuss the event object we mentioned earlier. The event object is a JavaScript object that contains data about the event that occurred. For example, on a click event it will contain the exact coordinates of where the mouse was clicked on the page, or whether the control or alt keys were pressed during the click. When we bind an event listener that executes a function, that function will automatically receive the event object as its first parameter. We can use it to access any event property or method. To demonstrate, let's display the value of an input field in a paragraph. We'll start by defining a variable called name and set its value to an empty string. Then in the markup, we do a paragraph, your name, and bind the name. Below it, we'll add a text input field. Then, on, input, to bind the input event to it. 
Then we'll reference a function called getInput. GetInput will be responsible for getting the value from the event object, so let's create it. Function getInput. Then the event as the parameter. And for now, let's just log the event to the console. Let's go to the browser, open the console in the dev tools, and start typing a name. Each letter we type fires the input event. If we expand one of the events in the console, we'll see its properties. In this case, we're interested in the target property, which is a reference to the element the event occurred on. Because the target is an input, we can use its value property to access whatever was typed in the field. So we access event, then the target, and then its value. Then we just assign that to our name variable. Now when we go to the browser and type a name into the field, it changes the name variable and shows up in the paragraph. So, we successfully got the value from the event object, through its properties. We demonstrated earlier, that when an event handling function has one or more parameters, we need to invoke it in an arrow function because Svelte automatically passes the event object to it. Then, we didn't need to use the event object. But let's say we do need it, in our change name function. Let's add it, and just log it to the console, to keep the example simple. But now, our function call in the button expects two arguments, so what do we put there? Well, Svelte makes the event object available to the arrow function as well. So we can add it to the arrow function's parameter list, then pass it on to the change name function call as the first argument. If we go to the browser and click the button, the name changes and the event object is logged to the console. So, the name still changes like we expect, and we can access the event object. Svelte allows us to connect a modifier to any event to change its behavior. For example, let's say our application contains a form. The default behavior for a form submission is to send an HTTP request to a server, refreshing the page and thus refreshing the application state. That means we lose any other data on the page that we may need to keep. To demonstrate, let's use a counter component with two functions that increments or decrements a number. Below the counter is a dummy form with a button that submits it. If we go over to the browser and click on the increment or decrement buttons, the counter changes. But if we click on the submit button, the page refreshes and the counter resets to zero. Typically, when working with forms, we want to prevent this default browser behavior. Instead, we want to read the user input, validate it, then send it off to the server. We can't do that if the value is lost. We can solve this problem though, by using the event object's prevent default method in a form handling function that's referenced when the form is submitted. Let's create a function called form handler with the event object as a parameter. Then in the logic, we'll invoke event dot prevent default and show an alert that says the form was submitted. Then on click of the button, form handler gets invoked. If we head over to the browser, change the number and submit the form, the counter value won't change. So the page doesn't refresh. This is a perfectly valid approach to solve the problem, but Svelte makes it a lot easier to do the same thing with event modifiers. An event modifier is chained onto the event with a pipe operator. Our earlier example uses the prevent default method. Its corresponding modifier is the prevent default modifier, which is basically Svelte using the prevent default method behind the scenes. To demonstrate, let's remove the method from our handler function then add the modifier to the button. So, after click, we do pipe and prevent default. If we go to the browser, change the counter and then submit the form, the counter doesn't change. So it still works as expected. We did the exact same thing we could with vanilla JavaScript, but faster and with less code. We're also not limited to using a single modifier on an event, we can chain multiple modifiers together, one after the other. All we have to do is add another pipe, then the modifier. To demonstrate, let's chain the once modifier to our example. 
The once modifier removes the event handler after the first time it runs. If we go to the browser and submit the form, it works like it did before. But if we try to submit the form after that, the alert message won't show and the page will refresh. So, the once modifier was applied to the chain. You can check out the link in the description for a list of modifiers, available in Svelte. Alright, that concludes this lesson on event handling in Svelte. In the next video, we'll learn two-way input binding. Thank you for watching, we'll see you again, in the next one.